They say sequels are never as good as the original. Well, we're putting that to the test as we bring you our top five alternative hits of the 90s, part two. Stay with us. Welcome, friends, to the 3324 podcast. A fun time to be had by all if we're doing this right. Host and listener alike, Eric. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Yeah. absolutely. Mm -hmm. Here we are again. Theoretically. (laughs) Theoretically, everybody should be having a good time. So, yeah, um, I yeah. they should. Well, I, I agree. Don't, I can't think of an episode where I haven't had a good time. <laughs> it's always enjoyable. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Any time with you, Dean, in the room, you're oh no, it's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's interesting. We'll leave it at that. And we'll 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 build on that uh, from there. So, um, we're yeah we're we decided you know this was um. We're not ones for sequels, and we bemoan sometimes how shitty sequels are. And you know, there's mm. there's a few that are really good, but um, our all, top five alternative hits of the '90s is is our most popular episode, bar none. Mm. Right there, are, there are none that are close to this episode of popularity. I think one of the reasons is I was I listened to it. I was in really good voice. I was really had command managing the guests really well guests and i think i think that yeah the guests you know well the guests and and, and the co-host managing him really well as well oh, and i think oh, that okay i think it's that people that listen to the episode that really got through to them hmm. and they may have said you know what? i want to listen to this again and maybe probably, one more time to make sure you're probably right what do you think <clears throat> I don't know. What do you what do you what do you think, Christy, our our special guest? Oh, oh wait, wait, we've got a guest with us. Yeah, she's oh, back. In order to uh <laughs> you know keep you know, I'm a somewhat superstitious person. So in if we're gonna do a part two to yeah. our most popular episode, we need to recreate the same circumstances that the so, first one took place in. So That's you right. wore the same um, underwear. So actually, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, we welcome Christy Cuomo to uh to this episode as well. Back then, it was her very first episode. She was very shy. She was very meek. Was it? And was now it? she is the world destroyer and the destroyer of people. Christy, was the that your first with us? Guests. Yeah, I that was her first. Uh, I, if, it, if it wasn't my first, I believe it, was, it, was. it was one of it was one of my first. I believe it was her okay. first one. And now she okay. is the destroyer of guests. I don't destroy <laughs> guests. I am I am kind and gentle. Put, put her in a, in a room to debate and uh She'll come out wiping the blood off her knife. So welcome, well, Christy. T- well, it's a testament to how, I mean, it's been, we're in, well into our third year and it's, yeah, it's just getting more and more fun, more comfortable. People are really enjoying coming on and just having yeah. a good time. As you say, Dean, it's a great hang. Yeah. Right. I mean, so, I mean, just really great like-minded people who come on and just like to share their their views on this stuff. So yeah. and um, have some laughs at, at, yeah, at, at our own expenses. And that's, yeah. that's half the fun as well. Mm-hmm. So I figured, you know what, let's, you know, like I said, this episode bar none, it, you know, so I don't, I don't know if it's a demographic thing. It's a mystery. Well, isn't I, it? I don't know. Yeah. yeah. I don't know why this, why alternative hits of the nineties is something that's pick that people pick up on. Yeah. We do a lot of, we do a lot of top fives to mm-hmm. be, you know, we do a, a fair share of top fives and they do. Okay. Um, but this one is just something, there's something about it. So I figured, you know, uh, let's test the theory. If we can capture lightning in a bottle and it was, do another five, because we, I, I think we did, Eric, did you go back and listen to that episode? I did actually yeah. a couple times. Yeah. And, and Christy I, listened to it. Right. And we, we lament yeah. as we do with every episode. <laughs> yeah. Um, how can I pick just five? Well, we're actually giving ourselves an opportunity to revisit, revisit the subject. Yeah. And see what comes up, Christy. And so, was, you know, was it more difficult oh, for you? Oh, yeah. No, I'm, I'm never doing this again. This was so I, hard. So hard. <laughs> I I literally, I, I'm still shuffling. Like, I, this was so, I, so I, I told, I, I told you guys the other day that I, I had 44 songs. I didn't know how I was going to get to five. And then I just kept adding songs. And sure. like I have, I have a, a Spotify playlist, like uh, '90s alternative part two, um, <laughs> that I yeah. that I've been listening to, and it, it this was 
this was difficult. This was really, okay. really difficult. I, 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 we cannot do this a third time. I don't care how well it does. I, I think we, we this was we, stressful. We, we, I, I, and we, we did very stressful. <laughs> um, I, you know, in in order to make this a you know fun and dynamic is we cannot repeat any artists from the previous one. It just doesn't mm-hmm. make any sense because then otherwise, like, what's the point of it? What's what's the point of doing that? So true. The, really, the only you know the only guardrail was yeah we, you know. Uh, Pearl Jam was it was in the last one, and uh, you know whoever whoever else was was in there. Um, just we don't want to bring those groups back for second helpings, right? right? It just doesn't make sense. There's, so this way, and, well, there's and plenty we, to go around. <laughs> there's so. plenty to go around. A and and yeah. we and B, we did make a playlist at the time. Mm-hmm. So what we're going to do is instead of making a second playlist, we're just going to add this to that playlist and make it part one and two. So this okay. way, this this is going to be like a killer. <laughs> An absolutely killer playlist. So I, it, it, I hope so. I, I know you've done a lot of top fives, and I know you've covered, you know, I, I think the seventies, eighties. And I read listening to this, and again, I'm I'm sentimental about the time period, which I, I talked yeah. about in the first episode. So it, it, it certainly is a a time period I relate to, and I'm, I'm you know, again, um, I just feel very connected to. It was it was a very good episode. It was a very good conversation, but. And we'll talk about it again. The music that came out of this time period mm-hmm. is so good. It's just it so is. good, which is why pairing it down to five is so, for me, incredibly hard. Like it would, it almost would have been easier if you allowed me to put Pearl Jam on because I could have, I could have taken the easy way out. It, it, it just mm-hmm. made it more difficult for me not being able yeah, yeah. to 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 what, be like I'm just going to go with Pearl you? Jam. What, Eric, what about you? Was it as as daunting i i came at it a little bit differently this time you'll be uh-huh. pleased to know that i might have been a little bit more objective with with oh. this list this point this time out um you know how i am cheers to that <laughs> however <laughs> um however. I, can gar- I can guarantee i could tell you this mm. with every song that i chose comes from a fantastic and even better album and Good. as as I listened to the songs, like I, I I did the same thing, Christy. I put a, I put a playlist together on Spotify for myself. Mm-hmm. I had about maybe twenty to, down to fifteen, and then it was a good solid ten for a while. So I figured, well, okay, well that I just kept switching them out. Like, what's going to be my honorable mentions? I didn't know how many we would be talking about. And then, of course, I have backup tracks in case we do there is a little bit of overlap so perhaps mm-hmm. i don't know if we're going to pick the same songs but we might pick yeah. the same group so the, i think that might be a good idea to maybe have some backup there so we don't have sure. like you say dean we re- we're repeating you know yeah. uh, but i could guarantee each one of my my five comes from just fantastic out because i listened to i've been listening Ooh. to these albums for the last two weeks that's interesting and it's been that, that makes me kind of think now of okay beautiful. yeah uh, interesting. I I have to admit, um, I may have had an unfair advantage because mm-hmm. I use an outline for every show, mm-hmm. and I write my notes in the same outline, and I have everything. And I went back to the outline from the original show. Okay. And back then, we, you know, nowadays we, we, when Eric and I do a top five, we do like five extra, all, like honorable mentions. Yeah. Back in that episode, I think we did one each. Right. So I, I think had, we just, yeah, we just mentioned yeah. one. Yeah, yeah, we just did one. We did right. one each. Mm-hmm. Um, and I had a bunch of honorable mentions. And to my surprise, or maybe not surprising, three of those honorable mentions were made this list. Like they were still, I still felt. Yeah, that's great. Like these, these were contenders. So so three just kind of really leapt, it, leapt back in once I realized, I'm like, wait, I have the notes. Let me go back and see what that was. Mm-hmm. Three of them just 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 pl- transplanted right in there. Um, that's that's oh, really so was, yeah that's great yeah i i still felt strong strongly enough that yeah these you know they had had those other five not existed and these were here i still feel like th- th- like this could have been mm-hmm. uh in the first episode you know so i don't feel like oh these are kind of you know uh has-beens or or you know second fiddles the, these were really a strong and were in contention back then so two, two of the songs um, on my list were i thought about the first time around Mm-hmm. I, I didn't put them on a list, though. I, not even an honorable mention. They didn't make. They didn't quite make it. But this time around, as and like and again, I say, I listened to the song. 
I, I, and then I'm kind of struggling because there's, you know, on a couple of these, there's a couple of great songs on off the same album. And I'm kind of like, I want this one instead of that one. Yeah. And it's just, you know, and they're all, and they were singles. I chose the singles from these records and not, and not you know, some really deep cuts, um, you know, obscure. You, I, I, you know, I didn't want to go to that, that, that deep in the well there. Um, but, but yeah, I'm, I'm proud of this list. I, I think it's, I think it's, uh, let's go. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm, and I'm really curious to see what you guys came up with this um, time. If, if we have any overlaps, I have about 51 or 49 songs. So I'm not worried. I'm not worried like about you have it. The backups for. Okay. Yeah, I do. And, and like Eric was just saying, there are legit and, and some of my, my, in the top five songs on here are from albums that from start to finish are just phenomenal. Yeah. Absolutely okay. phenomenal right. album. Where you're not you're not dropped. skipping you're not skipping a song. Hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Interesting. I, I don't know if I can say the same. So there might be a hint in there as well. So without further delay uh, or adieu, um, let's get it started. <clears throat> so Eric, why don't you kick us off with number five? All right. So number of the five. Top, top five alternative hits of the nineties part. Two. All right. So if you're watching this one for the first time, you have to go listen to the first part to get the first top fives, and then you can add to this one. So go for it. All right. So my number five is Short Lived Band. Actually, I think th that that's not true. They're still touring together, but they sadly lost their lead singer after their second record um, due to the excess of the time. Shannon Hoon, it's from Blind Melon. Um, and this, and the, I didn't pick, uh, no rain now, as good as that album is, I prefer the second soup, which did not do well at all. Uh, when it came out, it was really panned. And I think three weeks later he died of an overdose, but this album just musically is just so fucking good. I mean, it's just everything that I like in, in as, far, as far as like early late sixties, early seventies, that, that soulful sort of mountain jam type stuff, which is which is what they would have done had they continued on. They would have been that type of band. I, I know they did, they 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 play in the jam band circuits and things, you know, touring with a lot of other people, playing festivals. But sadly, without Shannon Hoon, that that vocal, and the song I chose was "Toes Across the Floor," and this song was uh, this got a lot of airplay. I remember um, in the early two thousands when I was working in Tampa uh, at Best Buy, we had an alternative station that would play this song all the time. I think I probably heard this more than I heard no rain. Mm. And I just freaking love it. It just speaks to the, you know, him speaking of the times. And of course, unfortunately those times, nothing's changed. It talks about, you know, mass shootings and things, you know, things, fucked up things are going up in the world. And, uh, and it's just one guy's perspective of, about that. And it's just, why isn't anybody listening Mm. How why isn't anybody feeling the way I feel? And the song just kind of takes it and lifts you there and it just takes you in that in that stratosphere. And it's just like just really it kicks in and there's like a flute going on in the background, little Jethro Toll action, <laughs> uh, which is fantastic. <laughs> you know. Nod. Oh yeah. And then uh, it also speak it also reminds me of of uh, the Chamber Brothers tune, uh, Time Has Come Today. Mm -hmm. Same riffs, same sort of uh, the same rhythm. Especially by the end of the song, you'll know what I'm. If you if you if you have time, go back and listen to that song. Time has come today, and then listen to uh, "Toes Across the Floor," and you'll see the similarities there. I think, but yeah, yeah fantastic, fantastic song from yeah. a fantastic album. Yeah. Greatly underappreciated. It's dark, mm -hmm. but it's just it's just so good, so good. Yeah, yeah. Shannon, Shannon Hoon was another one yeah. of the casualties of. Yeah. I don't know what episode we've talked about any, any of the alternative episodes we talked about how many of the grunge uh, pioneers or leaders of these bands. Oh yeah. Died from died from heroin overdoses. You it know, was the first, it was our first episode. We talked about it a lot. Yeah. yeah. Or, or even the, the Nirvana one, it's just like all these, you know, that's unfortunately kind of is part of the, of the legacy. Yeah. Is that a lot yeah. of these people, you know, just, you know, some made it past, you know, Chris Cornell made it past the 90s, but then, you know, unfortunately, um, but but a lot of these guys in the 90s or in the early 2000s just, you know, didn't just didn't make it. it Success just, just came too quick, I guess. Yeah. They just didn't know how to deal with it, you know, because yeah. they're trying to just make good music and they and they 
they, I guess they didn't know, you know, how to deal with the, all the, the red tape and, and everything else. Yeah. So I don't know, I, you know, yeah, it's just, Shannon it's Hoon had, a, had a very, a very unique voice too. Like his, Oh man. Yeah. You know, they, they, they had some, they had a, an interesting space to occupy yeah. uh, in, in that, you know, in that grunge slash alternative slash alternative pop yep. mm-hmm. <clears throat> genre, um, you know, with, with no rain, that kind of put him on that, put him on the kind of like the hippie map a little bit, like with rusted root and send me on my way. It was kind of yeah. like, those kind yeah. of flowery, crunchy granola guys, but but they they were able to rock out too, and and uh, yeah, their their second album was decidedly different. So uh, that's a good mm-hmm. choice. All right, let's yeah. go and going on to the playlist, the first edition to the new playlist. So, Christy, what do you got for number five? Uh, <clears throat> number five, I went with um, uh, REM. Uh, Try not to breathe off of Automatic for the People. Not the most popular song on the album, but. Uh, a sentimental favor for me. And that is one of the albums I was talking about where there's not one bad track on this album. Yeah. This album is killer. If you've never listened to it, just listen to it. Mm -hmm. Um, Try not to breathe uh, was a sentimental uh, favorite for me because it was, it came out a couple of years before my, my, my father died, but I I was able to relate to it. And uh, I, so the story goes, it's about Stipe's grandmother dying and stuff, but it just, the imagery that, again, kind of like what we talked about in the first episode, it's all, his, R.E.M.'s music is kind of a, a lot more poetic, you know, again, to me before it, it's anything else. So just the lyrics, his voice, it's haunting. It it just brings you into this like realm. Mm-hmm. Um, and the whole album is, is, is really dark. It's not, it's not a, it's not a, a uplifting album. It, it has a it has a lot of dark t- undertones to it, um, and I don't think they were hiding yeah. that. So, uh, but again, another band. I don't I don't think it. I think they all survived. Um, I, I think they retired. They're not they're not making yeah. music anymore. But this was another. Well, they band. were like, solid, like, yeah. like Pearl Jam, where unlike Blind Melon or Nirvana or all these, any of these other bands we we, we, mm-hmm. we will reference that we referenced in the first episode in this one. They didn't succumb to the too 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 fast too soon, you know, uh, and just consumption of everything. They they kind of kept their you know their wits about them, um, and and that's, yeah. that. I hate to yeah. say that. Well, so, I mean, so far from this list, we're, we're only two in, but REM is the original college alternative. You know, they kind of you know are the, are the you know the you look up college alternative eighties in the, in the dictionary and you're going to see REM. I mean, that was what yeah. they kind of, you know, created that genre. So they were kicking around in the eighties as college alternative. And then, it, you know, in the nineties kind of continued that and, and were on the alternative edge, you know, yeah, that, they that, weren't, that, you know. I wouldn't have ever no, they considered grunge. them grunge. No, they weren't grunge, they were alternative rock. Yeah. They, they kind of led the way for bands like OAR who were, college based bands that you know that's right uh, yeah so if you think of you know you think about you know bands like that but this you know again fantastic I, I don't know how many people would be familiar with this particular song um but listen to the whole album it's mm. just of course it, yeah it's just that was the follow <clears throat> the follow-up to out of time they were they were uh, they were just solid all the way through and i'm sure yeah. they had their ups and downs like you know i think we might have pointed that out in that episode dean but yeah. uh but yeah they just stayed true to what they were doing. I would, I would argue too, that they they're probably precursor to like a lot of the indie folk bands that are out there now in the indie uh, bands that are like, actually, you the, know, they were you pretty know. close to an REM reunion because uh, yeah. Mike Mills and, and Peter Buck are in a band together with a couple of other band uh, people and they do, they tour and they do songs about baseball. <laughs> yes, we we talked about yeah. We the band is that. called Baseball Something, and they they yeah. play in small theaters around in the area. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't think they do REM stuff, but huh. that's interesting. It's, it's, <laughs> depending on how many members of REM you're going to talk about, it's either a half reunion or a two thirds reunion because Bill Barry <laughs> left on his own accord. Yeah, uh, you know, early on. So, but uh, but who knows? Maybe one day they'll get back together. But that's a great choice what, yeah. from Automatic from the people. Um, <clears throat> all right, here we go. One hit wonders. So I'm, these are not coming from songs. these are not coming from great albums. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> these are just songs. hey, but that makes it all the better, man. We, we got these this are, nice eclectic mix going on. Yeah, here, well, so, the, yeah. these are these are those songs that kind of popped up. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> that created the landscape. 
for those mm-hmm. other for those big albums like Chili Peppers, where there was a lot of songs and all these other groups. Um, this group is called Sponge, and the song is Plowed, and it came out in mm-hmm. 1994, hit number five on modern rock tracks, and it to me it epitomizes what the sound of grunge is. You know, it, okay. it's just, it, it's 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 a it was a popular song in the alternative, you know, uh, charts. Uh, it was actually in the film Empire Records, but it did not make it to the soundtrack. Mm. So if you if you watch Empire Records, it's in it's it's played there, but what it's scene not on the soundtrack? Oh, I, I couldn't tell you what scene. Okay, uh, it's probably in the background. <laughs> Eric's um, like, which scene? No, I'm, I <laughs> watched the fucking movie to find that you know musical moments, man. <laughs> My next <Jesus>. album. <laughs> which scene? <laughs> Hang on, let's pause. Let's pause the show for an hour and a half. Uh, I'm gonna go watch it. I'm gonna go watch uh, honestly, it. you everyone, should, every, anyone listening to this episode should watch Empire Records. Phenomenal movie. It's a great movie. It's a movie of the nineties. Yeah, it's it's of its time, but, but it's of its time. It's, by uh, Plowed yeah. is is guitar heavy. It's got a it's got a, that growly grungy vocal. The the vocalist. Now that I think about it. Kind of reminds me of Scott Weiland, you know, of the of Stone Temple Pilots, mm-hmm. um, of Core, of the song Core. It's got he's got that growl. Okay, yeah, to it. you know, um, <sighs> I'm yeah. trying to place so, it. I'm trying to place. Well, the when, song. when you hear it, you when you, yeah, when you I'll probably it the playlist. You're gonna know it because it was okay. a popular. Yeah, it's got it's got this you know the guitar in the beginning is like and it's just. Uh, it just takes off, you know, mm-hmm. um, and it's just one of those ones that stays with me, you know, and, and it's a, it, this one reminds me of in 94, you know, still in my twenties kind of still reminds me of being young. I was like, okay, you know, like it, I, I can, I can put myself in that time in the nineties and kind of remember when it was out. So there's, mm-hmm. there's number, uh, number five for me is sponge, but uh, sponge and the t- song is plowed. Plowed. Using because they're both one <laughs> plowed. <laughs> like a field plowed. Uh, what do you and, got for number four? Eric? And in the notes, uh, Dean, yes. on Spotify, can you please put in there what scene in Empire Records for Eric it was in? I'll have to find yeah, it. You have I to. Will. You got please, it. No, scene where... please, <laughs> please reference it somewhere for Eric. If, if there's a clip on, if there's a clip on YouTube, I'll put, I'll put a link to the actual okay. clip of where it is in the film. All right. Well, I, I my mm-hmm. next choice is from a movie, and that's the oh. first time I heard it, and it's a bit more upbeat. Uh, see if you can guess the artist when I say the word quirky. All right, she's a, a female artist, and her her album Lisa Loeb her, torn. No, nope. I mean, not Lisa Loeb, not torn. Lisa Loeb. No, nope. okay. funnily enough, the name of the album is Debut, and it's Finland's own Bjork. Oh, okay. With uh, Venus, Venus as a boy is the name of the track. Is the track, and it was it was uh, I first heard it in a, a, this came out in ninety three. The album, but I first heard it in the professional, huh. Leon the professional. And it's the scene with the little montage where she's taking care of him. And he's he's training her. He's starting to train her how to you know how to use a gun. But meanwhile, he's taking care of his plant, and she's buying the milk. And they play this little sweet song in the background, and I just love that track. It's just so catchy and and, and poppy and just bizarre and weird and just she's speaking Finnish in it, in it and it's just <laughs> you know sure. uh but it speaks to the the idea of of like a relationship but she's concentrating on the male uh perspective and she's admiring how much she he, the, the the boy in this situation sees the beauty in everything which is you know is, is kind of rare for a guy to you know he's kind of hides his feelings you know his emotions yeah. Uh, but if you watch, you know, it kind of reminds me of the film, Leon being such a child and he's this cold blooded killer. And here he's taking care of sweet care of this plant, you know, the roots and all that stuff. So it just it just reminds me of that. And I just that was actually one of the songs I first thought of, you know, in the first time go around. But oh. uh, I decided not to go there. But it, yeah, I was glad to put it on this list. Yeah. Yeah. It's a sweet. So that was a, so that was a holdover for you. Yeah. The, the album is just really good i mean it's just you know you know i like weird stuff and it's just um she was from a, a band called the sugar, the sugar cubes which is decidedly more more rock and slightly more on the punk edge you know as well post-punk or whatever but you know then she started experimenting with dance beats and trip hop and electronica and all that kind of stuff so uh but yeah the album's just really 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 good 
I can just catch yeah, it. I, yeah. I was into the sugar cubes back in the in the in the mid to late eighties when they first yeah. came out. Mm-hmm. It was it was weird and it was quirky and it was also a guy. You know, it was like kind of more of a group. Yeah, um, there was a guy singer as well, and it was kind of really weird and strange. And I and I right. have the, I have the CD of their first thing, and then she, yeah, she went on her own and became Walk off on her own, and she became, York, yeah, <laughs> became her own I, thing. So. I just remember the first time I saw her on mm-hmm. SNL. I'm like, she's dressed in like the pigtail, like she looked like a little anime character, like one of those, yeah. you know. Um, you know, dressed in the weird like fur and like the and the big yeah, shoes, the platform shoes. shoes. And he's dressed as a swan. <laughs> he's, he, and that's part of the nineties, right? I mean, he, I mean, that's alternative in its in yeah. in itself. You know, it's just, but it's Absolutely. alternative pop or dance. I think it's there's a term for that as well. So yeah, yeah, why not? There it so is. What's the title? What's it? What's the name of the song again? The name of the song is Venus as a Boy. Venus as a Boy. Yeah. Cool. I yep. I ate sugar cubes for a while in the nineties. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, All right. Do do, do kids still there. do that? I, I think maybe I maybe packets. Maybe I don't. Uh, Dean was. There. I mean, yeah, I don't know. You were into sugar for a while there. I mean, drinking the. Yeah, the, the, the funny thing is, I wasn't really into sugar, but I'd be like, yeah, I'll have a sugar cube. I don't think I could do it. I think it's I did there. it maybe when I was li- really little. I literally ate chewed a couple of kids. I couldn't sugar do it. Cube? Is that what you're talking about? Couldn't do it. Yeah, I, I remember chewing mm-hmm. on I, It wasn't like yeah, a regular I thing. I, I mean, I sucked on lemons a lot more than I chewed uh, eight sugar cubes. But yeah, okay. I'm just giving you a little insight um, to what's, go, what's yeah. going on in my world. That's all. Eating just sugar let, cubes and eating just let, lemons. Just letting you in. That's all. There we go. <laughs> little by little. <laughs> then once, once you're in, that knife. And on that note, what's your number four? (laughs) My number four. My number four is Bittersweet Symphony, The Verve. Oh. Oh. Controversial song. Very controversial. Oh, it is. I didn't know about this, actually. I didn't know that Mick Jagger and Keith Richards. But in 2019, they they, they seeded. They were like, they, they... they took, I think they took their names off of it oh, and gave, gave it them full, get full rights. But it was, was it because of a, a riff or something like a, a guitar it's riff that, or well, something? It, yeah, what it is, is it's that violin riff in the beginning that, you know, well, yeah, you can't, you can't steal music. I mean, Ice baby. Yeah, but it was a roundabout theft because that was sampled from a, from a classical album from a guy in the sixties that did like classical versions of Rolling Stones songs. So okay. they took that. They took that riff from that thing. So why do I feel like you told me about that band? I don't know. It was, it, it, so it wasn't a direct. It was it wasn't like a direct theft. It was kind of like a sample of. It was sampling copyrighted music, but not the direct recording I'll, that that Stones did. But it was still their music that they wrote. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just talking yeah. about theft and and artistry. I'll be honest. Like there is very little that you don't. If you're a writer or a, a painter or a musician, you're always you're being inspired by something. You're always stealing a little bit and making it your own. Mm-hmm. I, I just find it difficult that you're not. So, uh, t- probably to what Dean's saying, it was a roundabout way. Andy could tell you that that much um, at least as an artist. No, I mean, he, would, they he would agree. It it wasn't, yeah. they weren't they weren't claiming they were innocent. Mm-hmm. Um, um, but this, but this is a, this is a great song. This song comes on and you just. You know it. It just it brings you back to a time period. It's oh, yeah. it's about yeah. the 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 tragedy of life, and you you, you work in, in t- until you die. And it, it I think especially like when you if you were you know when did it come out uh, ninety seven so early twenties and you're starting to get into the the workflow of things after school you know after, you know getting out of school and everything um, being done with that part of your life it it just it it just spoke to me. But it's it's just a catchy tune. Mm-hmm. It really is. It's it's, and and that's what the Stones' lawsuit was. Is 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 it's catchy because of that riff. A very yeah. it very well might be. Like, it's, not, it's, not it's not a very big part of the song, but that's why they're saying that's what makes the song is that. But it's, it is because that's, that's what you remember. You you can't get that out of your head for yeah. the rest of the day. When you, once you hear it, you're that's yeah. in your head. Yeah. But man. what's what's it's, interesting it's, about this song <laughs> is it's it's both melancholy and and upbeat. Like it, it, they really pull it off because they're talking about being a slave to money till you die. They're talking about capitalism. Yeah. They're, talking, they're talking about a lot of deep things about about just the tragedy of life and then yeah. death. But you're singing it and you're like kind of like bopping to it because yeah, 
<laughs> I, I, so it's like it's it, it's a little manic. You, I, I, should you be so happy when you're singing this song? I don't know, but I am. Um, and it's just it's just a great tune, and it, it does it it just transports you back in time. Um, and I don't yeah. think they had. I think this was it. Really, really, their big hit. I don't think they had yeah, too. Pretty much it. The the Rolling yeah. Stones song was was called the last time. So just so. You, Okay. Know, so and I'll, li- I'll listen to it I, I, just to see if I could if I could hear it. Yeah, we well, can put um, it in the show notes as well. Well, we spoke about yeah. and we we talked we said this several times, right? I mean, the '90s brought back that a lot from the '70s, the early '70s, late '60s period. You you, you hear a lot in this music, I think. I mean, yeah. there's a little something there for every for every band. Certainly, you know. Uh, a couple more tracks on my list have that as well. So, we'll, but I'll get to that. But, uh, yeah. but yeah, I mean, it just it, it recalls a time that was special to Dean and I. You know, we grew up with that. But you know, hearing this stuff sort of, even if it's just subliminal, even if you think you heard it and it's not really there, but you think it is, kind of just a little riff or something that just reminds you and takes you back to that one track. You know, like, and you could just listen to an entire song. Mm. As a result of that, like my first pick was th- th- that's the effect that I had. I, I just thought of that song it was time comes today. And it's just, yeah. And I think if you, I think you'll agree if you, if you just put them side by side, you know, I don't know if that was the intent, but it, you know, might've been who knows. Sure. So anyway, All right. Dean, <laughs> my number four. Hey, oh, um, Dean's here. Shit. This oh, one, hey, Dean. this one was, <laughs> This one was was a holdover from the last list, and it's the Cranberries okay. Zombie. Ah, oh, thank, thank you. And it, oh. and it should have, you know, <clears throat> I, I, I really, it, fantastic. It physically hurt me to not have it on the first list. Thank you so I, I much. Came out in 1994. Yeah. It was number one on on the Modern Rock Rock Tracks chart. Uh, a very political song in, in the response to the death of two two children that were killed in IRA bombings. Dolores O'Rourdon is was like for me when I heard this, this was like Sinead O'Connor reincarnated. It was the best parts of what I loved about Sinead O'Connor when we did our yeah. Sinead O'Connor episode. The the way you know her vocalizations or the way she the way she sings, very much in that that lane, which mm-hmm. immediately drew me to to the to cranberries. I was like I was like what is this? It's it's reminiscent of of Sinead O'Connor by ninety four. You know, Sinead O'Connor was going off into different things and kind of, you know, the backlash had taken place. So the Cranberries come and they're putting that kind of uh, that kind of vocal style onto yeah. this alternative, uh, you know, upbeat like, songs like Linger and Dreams and all this other stuff. Oh, Linger's um, a great song. Yeah, yeah, but Zombie is just a, it's just like it's haunting. It's, yeah. <laughs> you know, it, it's heavy. It's got heavy guitar. It's there's there's a lot. There's a lot to it. Um, and I think it's probably the, one of the best of, of what they have to offer. I mean, I like, I like a lot of their other stuff too, uh, Ode to my family and, and other, other great stuff, but zombie kind of, uh, is, the, is that heavy haunting thing that kind of sticks with you. Yeah. Uh, you know, and again, you know, to, to hear that kind of Irish influenced vocal style kind of put into it, it, it immediately separated it from everything else that was going on. I was like, this is something different that's going on here, which I, like I said, I hadn't heard since. And that is a great album, by the way. Yeah. The album. No need to argue. I think it was, or, uh, yeah. I'm so happy. So um, so yeah, that was, yeah. What's that? It was, it was on my list. Uh, it's, it's on my playlist. I'm so happy you picked it. Yeah. 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 It killed me to not have it the first time around. I, I don't know why I kind of, as soon as I went back to that list, I'm like, okay, you're, you're up. Here we are. <laughs> and and, and, right. and, Dean, and Dean, you're right. Her voice is just yeah, phenomenal. What a yeah, f- yeah what a great voice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's just incredible. So, all right, let's move on to number three, Eric. All right, number number three, longest track on my on my list. It clocks in at a whopping six minutes oh, twenty seven seconds. Um, and it's an album that, you know, frankly, you know, I'm embarrassed to say being the prog man that I am never paid all that much attention to. I mean, I loved their second album, uh, but this was uh, okay. Computer. This was a uh, paranoid Android Radiohead, And, uh, this is like full on change. I mean, you're talking about a band that just reinvented themselves completely. 
And Prague is alive and well in the 90s. Here it is. You know, it's uh, this album is just experimental to the max. This song, it, it's in, th- it's like broken up into three separate parts. It has all the changes that like all the best Prague you know, bands would do back in the day. I think uh, Tom York, the vocalist, said it was 50% Bohemian Rhapsody and 50% Happiness is a Warm Gun by the Beatles. So yeah, I could kind of see that. And, you know, a little bit in there, but it's just, you know, it, 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 I guess it's a, he had a very strange experience in a bar, sitting in a bar with a group of people that were all just doped up on, on blow. They were just doing blow all night and they just had all, everybody's reaction was different. Everybody was just whacked out and they would just, it made him so like, absolutely like, I have to get the hell out of here. And he, he was sitting next to this woman and this is where the title of the song comes from. That's where he started thinking about some of the lyrics. And he, she looked at him like with lifeless eyes. There's like her eyes just went completely, looked like they went completely dark. And she looked like a, a machine, like an Android. Like, and he just thought of that title, like right off the bat as a result of that. And it was just, just a very strange, surreal type of thing. And the album is reflects that whole surrealism effect. And I, yeah. I've been listening to that thing nonstop. And Tom York, again, the, the vocal, I mean, you talk about a great vocalist, this, you know, he went on to inspire a lot of different vocal. you know, you think about Chris Martin from Coldplay, you think about Matt Bellamy from Muse, James Blunt even, I think was, in, you know, he, he was inspired by them. Justin Hawkins from The Darkness, so these like high falsetto type singers, right, in, in, the, in the 2000s that came out of the woodwork, and he... Apparently wasn't too happy about that, Tom York. He was like, you know, these guys are ripping me off. They're ripping off my style. <laughs> and I think it was like his producer or something said, listen, you got to let that shit go, man. Yeah. You're inspiring them. Exactly. <laughs> you, know, you know, so, yeah. yeah. I'm going to give you a bell for Justin Hawkins. Yeah. <clears throat> he's a man. Yeah. He's, wow. <laughs> he's got a great YouTube channel. If you like Justin, if you like music yeah. and uh, from the darkness, he's got a YouTube channel. It's called Justin Hawkins Rides Again. Yeah, and he listens to new music, and you know, and he's so you he, he's a really great musician and just a really funny guy to listen to. But yeah, <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Radiohead was kind of out on the fringes of of that scene. You know, yeah. they were more the artsy and more the weird. You know, the more and kind they of would do the better edge of it of it. And you know, they they later albums songs. would they would they would carry yeah. that on and they would actually improve upon it. But this was the breakthrough. Right. Right. I had considered two that, one of the. I had two of their songs on my list. I mean, uh, okay. two of the popular songs, but I, I yeah. liked Radiohead. I mean, yeah, their first yeah. album was full on. They were just another grunge band trying to, and it just, it, I mean, aside from Creep, yeah. uh, the rest of the album was kind of blase and compared to everybody, what everybody else was doing. And then, of course, I loved uh, the second album. Uh, I, I thought that was a great album. And then this thing is just so completely. Yeah, they, they kind of had to find so, their, yeah. their niche, you know, and yeah. that was. <clears throat> that yeah. was the thing we talked about. A lot of these bands in the beginning, you know, uh, Stone Temple Pilots sounds like Pearl Jam and, and they all sound, and then they started mm-hmm. to kind of create their, you know, kind of find their own way, you know, mm-hmm. but Radiohead kind of went way out there, really kind of, uh, you know, uh, going into territory that other bands weren't even going more atmospheric and, and kind of, and, and, and again, we, we of t- a groove of, of things, almost like yeah, we, deadish of, of that. Yeah. You know, well, they like, talked about, we talk about the, uh, the bands decidedly going back sort of anal and more analog sound here. They did the opposite. They started experimenting with digital tools, but yet at the same time they were using old, old G like instrument, like Mellotron and stuff like yeah. ELO was using back in the seventies, you know, the, the voices, the eerie vocals and getting those effects and, you know, just putting it all together and just creating some really, really interesting stuff. And it's cool. just fantastic. Oh. Yeah. Radiohead. Christy, yep. so far your list is safe. Well, I, I'm happy you Radiohead made every it. Every time one of us starts to. <laughs> well, my list is safe, but but a lot of people that didn't make it to the top five, but were on my you know, very large list, are making it. So I'm very happy okay. about that. All right. Yeah. So uh, what do you What do you have for number three? Well, now I have to make my choices. Uh... <laughs> well, I hope you have them written down. I do have them written down, are but you I using them uh, on the fly was, as we're going. Was, no, it was, it was okay. difficult. It, this was not easy. <laughs> this is not. Um, you know, I went. I, I probably went a little bit more. You know, like mainstream. So um, I'll put for number uh, three. Um, I'll do a uh, Bush Glycerine. Um, 
and and Sixteen Stone for me was another one of those albums that I I personally don't think there's a bad song on it. Uh, it was a band I saw a lot. I, I think I saw them like four, four or five times. I, I saw Bush a lot in concert. Mm. Um, but this was a great song. I mean, just just uh, again the lyrics. I think it's about his 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 girlfriend at the time. Although there's always they always say it's about something, and then when when they're not with that person anymore or a situation changes, they're like, Oh, no, it wasn't about that. It was about this. So <laughs> I, I don't, I don't, I don't know what the, most people say it was about a, a girlfriend at the time, but I mean, even uh, couldn't love you more. You got a beautiful taste, which was, I think the lyric that got me sold on that song. Cause I'm like, what a great line. Like couldn't love you more. You got a beautiful taste. And I, I was, that was it. I was done. Um, but Bush came on the scene and, and they stayed, they, I, I'm, I think they still make music. I, I, I didn't love Cameron a lot Russell of their, kind of back with, yeah, you know, with I, I didn't really love a lot of their in, later, but... their later on stuff, but, um, yeah. albums, but their, their first couple albums I, I dug and I was into yeah. them. Uh, and but they Gwen were, Stefani ruined them. Gwen Stefani ruins nothing. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> One of, her, one of her songs is on my longer list, so glad okay. glad her name got mentioned in the episode. Um, but uh, <laughs> yeah, like this is again another album that can just transport me to a very specific time in my life, mm. and kind of like I, we always talk about it, uh, just make you feel a certain way. Um, your bring you back to your youth, give you some type of energy. So whenever these songs come up, like even, and I didn't pick Machine Head, but Machine Head comes on and I, like you were thinking, it, uh, the song just is like a, a pure adrenaline. And then you're thinking about the movie Fear. Do you remember the movie Fear with, uh, Mark, Wahlberg. with Mark Wahlberg and Reese mm. Witherspoon? And like Mark yes. Wahlberg is like the boyfriend <laughs> from hell and is like, I don't know, going to kill her. Hey, how do you ma for me? <laughs> Hi, Reese. How's it going? Hey, Reese, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm a serial killer. You know that? I'm going to kill your whole family. But say hi to your mom for me. It's one. Of, it's one of your better impersonations, actually. But so, so yeah, I mean that's 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 Bush. So, you are not yeah. an alternative '90s band. Oh man! All right. You, anyway, you, my number three uh, comes it from <clears throat> is from 1999, the the literal end of this era. Mm -hmm. Right. And, yeah. and by 1999, you know, really grunge had turned songs. into alternative and then alternative had turned into like alternative pop. Okay. And this songs? song just, this was a carryover. This stuck in my head when I first heard it, meaning when I very first heard it, I used to think it was, I, I used to get it mixed up with the song urgent from foreigner. Cause it sounded similar. The beginning sounded similar. I'm like, is this urgent from foreigner? Are they taking that riff? The group is lit and the song is my own worst enemy. I love this song. This is like pop okay. alternative candy. <clears throat> it is, it is, it's bouncy. It's jumpy. It's guitar-y. It's all, all the good things that I like about, about the pop side of this, of this genre. Um, yeah. These guys, this was it <laughs> one and done. You know, these guys went on the tour with 20 other bands afterwards. They're they're still going around. The, the lead singer, AJ Popoff, he he co-wrote it, uh, claims that he sang the song naked in the studio when he sang it. He said, I was naked when I recorded this. Why not? Because it's about the song is about those the day after regrets. You know, why wouldn't why wouldn't we, you believe that? <laughs> you know, this is the you 90s know well, yeah, it could, well, it could be increasing, oh, the legend, I mean, you but know. You know uh, you know, can we forget He's, about the things we said when I was drunk? I didn't mean to call you that. So the song is about those kind yeah. of like day after regrets that you kind of right. wake naked. up and you didn't know what happened. He baptize himself. He was, he was naked. He was going to baptize himself, yeah, just in, cleanse in himself studio. of his sins in the <clears throat> studio. But, but Lit is like the epitome of those, those one hit wonders that were single file were going through the radio waves of kind really of getting, getting their turn in line, yeah. getting a catchy song leaving and then the next one would come and they would have their their turn at it and, and leave and and lit it, it's just a, but it's nice it's so guitar-y and so bouncy and um you know it's got a great chorus it's, it's a song that i can kind of sing along to when i'm singing when i'm in the car mm -hmm. it's kind of like i don't i don't care 
it's one. So it's got all the it's got all the right uh, right components for uh, for the playlist and for when I when it comes on, I'll I'll even go back and hit it again. You like I'll, I'll listen to it. It's one of those ones that I'll double dip on. I, I, I got to hear this one again. It's like, cause it's just so, it's just so catchy and so bouncy. And I love that. That's, you know, that's right in my wheelhouse. So, mm. um, so number three, and that was number one on the modern tracks, the modern track, modern tracks chart was a subsection of billboard and it was essentially the alternative charts. Yeah. You know, that was where like a lot of these things that we're talking about did not hit the billboard charts, but they hit the modern rock rock charts, which was tracking all that. And this mm-hmm. was number one on that. So this was kind of like for those stations that were playing this type of music. This was right there. This was right there. So that was number three is lit. My own worst enemy. Nice. Ready for number Very two. Nice. So what do you guys think? Is this better than the last one or what? So far? <clears throat> I, I'm sold. For me, it's a continuation. I'm happy because I'm kind of getting the ones in that didn't make it the last time. So I'm, I'm kind of apologizing. Yeah. I'm making it up to the ones that, that I had to say sorry to. I, I, yeah, I, I don't think it's it's better. I, I think if we can do it, um, like a top 50, I would be able to, I'd be, ha- I'd be satisfied. It would take like yeah. a year. <laughs> yeah, my... do like a marathon, the longest. I'm, I'm still, I'm still going through like a bunch of these and I'm like, <laughs> yeah. All right. What do you, Eric, what do you got for number two? Well, number two, this is also from 99. Um, another oh, great, look at that. all right. Another great, um, did female, I worry you? Female artist. Did I worry you when I said 99? Who, me? Yeah. No. No? Okay. No. You weren't worried? No, I wasn't worried. Right. <laughs> I I honestly thought you were gonna, you were thinking about another song, but that's okay. obviously not. I'm not going to mention it, so it may be. You never know, yeah? You never know. <laughs> Her debut was, was great enough. You know, she was all of 18 when she came out with it, and that was Title, Fiona Apple. And um, I prefer her second record. Because at 18, you're singing about teenage angst, and there's a lot of that sort of in, you know, well within the wheelhouse of what Alanis was doing at the at that time. And uh, but this album is is decidedly more mature. I would I would say that it's almost like she aged 10 years. So musically speaking, it's so much more sophisticated. She, I mean, it's it's uh, and the and the track is fast as you can, which is the first single off the record from the album When the Pawn dot 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 the the actual title of the album is a is a is a poem that goes on and on and on i think she's got the distinction of having like the second longest album title ever in <laughs> music history and i you guys are gonna have to look that up you listeners out there because i'm not gonna read it <laughs> it's, a, it's this whole thing um but yeah i mean she just goes through like again just it talks about relationships and but in a much brighter way, musically speaking, you know, but I mean, she's like broken on this record, but, and the song itself is about a relationship falling apart and, you know, the ups and downs of it. And even if you just not listen to the lyrics and just listen to the music, it takes you there. You could definitely hear, you know, cause the song kind of stops and it kind of slows down and there's this sort of waltzy kind of soulful uh, thing going on there. Her vocal is just, you know, she's got that little bit of a vibrato thing going on that little, uh, you know, in the middle, mm-hmm. uh, it, it's just great. And her, her piano skills are, are top notch as well. So it's very jazzy, sort of like upbeat, kind of reminds me of Ben Folds five. It's that type of like tempo wow. and that, you know, that kind of hard kick in wow. like, ding, ding, you know, like that, you know, so yeah, that, that I, I, and again, I, I listened to the entire record and I, cause I love the song and I actually had this on cassette back in the day. Mm-hmm. You know, I used to listen to, I didn't really, you know, dig the whole album at the time, I guess. But I, I, I dug the song. I had heard it on the radio a number of times. I saw the video and, uh, but I revisiting it, I, you know, I, I admire it. It's just, it's a, it's a great record. So cool. yeah, Fiona yeah, Apple, Fiona, Fiona Apple was circling my list with criminal. Yeah. Ooh, was, was on the, was on the, was on the outer, outer edges of the, of the list of kind of like, you know, fighting her way through, punching her mm-hmm. way through. So good choice. I'm glad Fiona Apple uh, yeah. made the list. Christy, what do you got? Number number two, right? We're up to number two. See, I, this is... Uh, 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 what? <laughs> this, is, uh, this is... I don't know. Because because yeah, you have these like mainstream artists who were really popping in the 90s and deserve to be in the, in the top five. But then you have these more than one hit wonder bands that had maybe one really killer album and then mm-hmm. disappeared. And, and I've, I, I just, I haven't like, I, I just, 
Give me all you got. I got, um, so my, uh, I have this list in front of me and I'm like, do I go more, a little bit more mainstream or do I go the other way? And I just, I don't know because they both, they just both. Go with your heart. Go with your gut. That's number two. Do it. It should be there. Should be on your list already. Do it. Do it. <laughs> you're telling me that you have actually two lists and you're choosing from different lists. Is that what you're no, saying? No, I, I have, I, yeah. I legitimately have 50 something songs. Okay. It, this was not easy. Okay, no. I don't know why you, you think I'm lying to you. I'll, I'll go, I'm going to go with a, a little bit more obscure and I'll tell you afterwards what, what would have been number two. I'm going to do um, Candlebox Cover Me, which was released okay. in um, 1993. And again, it was on, um, I think the title of the album was, uh, it was Candlebox. Was that, did that have Far Behind on it? It had Far was Behind, You, yeah. and Cover Me yeah. were like the three hits off of it. Mm-hmm. Um, I think one of uh, one of the songs, or they wrote a song for the With Honor soundtrack. Is on the With Honor soundtrack. Uh, Joe so Pesci's Lindsay- in it, Brendan yeah. Fraser. What? So did Lindsey Buckingham. Yes. Oh, he gets the same bellows as Jeff yes. Lynne? Oh, yeah. Just a little, it's just a little bit higher. It's too. Wasn't there something higher. about ELO on Instagram today from you? No. Oh. Um, so this is just another, uh, a, a, just another song that is, it's dark. It's, it's, it's a little haunting. It's um, a conversation. Uh, uh, you know, I, I, I think it's about faith, uh, him and God, and just a conversation uh, about that relationship. And, where he is at that point of his life, uh, you know, you cover me, you know, in, in the back and forth. But this was just this. I loved this album. I don't know how many people knew about Candlebox when they came out. I don't think they were all that popular. But hmm. this guy, uh, he had a lot of really popular because they had yeah. those, that one album had a lot of stuff on it. Yeah, but then again, that was my yeah. point. It's like you get these, you you get these, this one album, and then. Yeah. Move on. So, so they're not a one-hit wonder because they had legitimate, they had legitimate hits off the album. But then they're they just like that. They're gone. Yeah. You know. So, um, so I, I'll I'll go with Candlebox because I really I really dug Candlebox nice. in the nineties. Like I I was yeah. I, I that album that CD got pl- had a lot of playtime in my life. Cool. So. cool. <clears throat> All right, Candlebox. I remember them. Yeah. Remember them. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, As I, I said, Far so. Behind and You. Uh, those were those were great those were great tracks as well. Again, all this was like that that tapestry of music that was going on. I'm going to give you a hint for my number two. It should be a giveaway. It should be pretty easy to guess if you're at all hip to what was going on in the '90s. If you were awake just for a fragment of time in the '90s, the Clue Happy Days. I know it. Weezer. <laughs> Weezer, Weezer, Buddy Holly. Yep. One of the greatest music videos ever made. How could you not fall in love with it? It was made for people of our generation because we grew up on happy days. That's right. And it's from, uh, so it's Weezer. The song is Buddy Holly from 1994, number two on the modern rock chart tracks. Uh, and, and interestingly enough, the single was released on Buddy Holly's, what would have been his 58th birthday. Mm. Um. Okay. One of the greatest, most most uh, interesting music videos all, of all time, done without the assistance of computer generated graphics. They did all that stuff with body doubles, with you know back you know fakes, yeah, inter, interspersing editing and stuff, but no computer generated stuff was that was done with. They got Al Mal- Malinaro, who played Arnold, to to come in and and do the beginning part where he you know from Kenosha, and mm-hmm. that was he was still alive at the time, so they got him to do that. Yeah. Um. You know, uh, Anson Williams, who plays Potsy, he actually filed a lawsuit. He's like, you know, come on, like, da, da, da. David Geffen sent him a letter, you know, like, sh- shut the fuck up. <laughs> Fucking, you know, enjoy it. Like, like, we're bringing, you know, we're bringing you back. Into we're the honoring you. Yeah. yeah. We're bringing you back in the limelight. There's, yeah. There's, it's got one of the greatest choruses, yeah. right? There's, there's, there's like four people who know Anson, who Anson Williams are. Three Potsy. of them are on, are on, yeah, on this podcast. Here. The other one's That's, him. Well, he's, <laughs> and Nick Leshy. And Nick Lesh, the professor. <laughs> He's but, actually um, a director now. He he became yeah. like a t- uh, he did some. Yeah, Star he does a lot of TV and, stuff. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, so so David Geffen wrote him a letter. Said, "Listen, come on, just you know, cool your jets, man." <laughs> and then what happened in in like 1995? What what Weezer didn't know is that when you know when Windows 95 was coming out, 
the Buddy Holly video was included in the operating system. And so what, what it meant is that all these people got to see this video for free before YouTube, you know, it was on MTV, mm. obviously, but it helped them because it came pre-installed with Windows, like as their sample of like videos, you, you get photos Why? and stuff like that. That was the, that's the arrangement their, their management company made because it was cutting edge at the time. Hmm. But Weezer didn't know anything about that. Then they're, now they're like, oh my God, thank God. Like it put us in, in all these homes. Uh, at the time, and it's huge. got one of the greatest choruses, choruses, right? Ooh, you just like Buddy Holly. Oh, 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 and you're Mary Tyler Moore. It's like, it's, mm-hmm. it's a great sing along song. When you watch the video, they got the guy doubling. It was like a stage hand or whatever on the shoot, doubling as Fonzie when he's doing the dance at the end because that yeah. was shot from <laughs> that was shot from behind. Yeah, but it's yep. you know it was Spike Jones who was a great music video director. He was like on the cutting edge of MTV. He was one of those pioneers. Oh, he got uh, doing it right. stuff, he nailed it. Doing stuff with the genre, doing stuff with the with it. Um, Rick Ocasek, from you know one of the lead singers and songwriters from the Cars, was producing this album. Mm-hmm. And Rivers Cuomo, no relation to Christie, Rivers. You Cuomo, don't know that? It. Oh, we know it. You don't know? He's put out a public statement. I'm not related to Never Christy Cuomo, it. who was seen on the on the thirty three twenty four podcast. Was that put in, in the um, windows? Came he, on he wrote he wrote the song. Um, and, but he didn't want to record it. And Rick Ocasek was like, just you know, like, we're not going to put out anything that you don't like, but just record it. Just record. Like he didn't want to do it. He just didn't want to record mm-hmm. it. He, and Rick Ocasek goes, just record it. Mm-hmm. We're, we're not going to, if you don't like it, we're not going to put it out. We won't do it. Yeah. They recorded it. And then the rest is history. And it just became one of those classic yep. alternative hits it, along with the music video. It, they, they melded together and it just became like magic. Dean, bad. what you, you what you what you didn't mention about about that song yeah. is that Rivers Cuomo called his cousin Christy Cuomo. What who, did he call her? <laughs> and we had a we had a long what did he dis- call her? We had a long discussion, and <laughs> you're welcome is all I'm going to say. You're back. Okay. Did he send you to an island in the sun, <laughs> or did he send you to Beverly Hills? I can't. I was. I, I signed a disclosure agreement. I'm not all okay. right. We're ready. Are we ready for number one? No. We're at number one. <laughs> we we no. are here. We are at the, we're at the final destination. As always, we're going to give you a, we're going to give two two uh, honorable mentions. This is all going to be rolled up into the giant playlist and added to the original alternative alternative hits of the nineties mm-hmm. uh, Spotify playlist. So we're going to just cram this stuff into it. So that's that was like uh, fifteen. <clears throat> it's going to be like close to thirty songs. This playlist. It probably yeah. not would be more than 30 songs. So this is going to be a really nice playlist. That, it's that not we'll going to get you to Florida, we'll, kids. We'll put it in the show notes and we'll link it to Spotify. So Eric, uncork right. your number one, would you kind, sir? <clears throat> I will. And by the way, this is a, was in no particular order of preference. Mm-hmm. I just kind of, you know, but this. All right. <clears throat> I knew this album at the time when it came out. Um, this girl that I, uh, she was an employee of mine at Suncoast in Tampa would not shut up about this this album this guy Uh uh-oh and it's become probably one of the most devoted albums of all time um jeff buckley grace um and the song is uh, last goodbye and you know i at the time i was kind of like yeah this this guy's really good and again the falsetto thing, the whole like high pitched vocal. And, but, but my critique of it at the time was like, this guy's just trying too hard. Yeah. Cause this thing, I mean, for a debut album, this thing is like lush strings and pro- overproduction. And it's just like galore. And I'm like, what is he, what is he trying to say here? I'm like, I, w- I wasn't trying, I was trying to figure it out. And upon listening to it, obviously now then that, you know, you, you come to know more and, and it's just, yeah, I mean, he he gave it his all. He really right. did, you know, and uh, Zeppelin was a major, major influence, I think, on this record. He, I know he was a big fan, and I know they were, you know, very, and Jimmy Page and Robert Plant actually praised him for it. David Bowie said it was the greatest album ever recorded. Okay, David Bowie says that, it's high yeah. praise. You know, Bob Dylan said he was like the best songwriter of the, of the, of that year or that decade or something to mm-hmm. that effect. And then, you know, he was tapping into all of these things and tragically he lost his life. Yeah. Another while one. he was, wor- while he's working on his second album, he drowned 
Yeah. Uh, but from what I understand, from what I hear, it was like he was acting very erratically at that point, already maybe sort of succumbing to the, again, the fame and, the, you know, but the album wasn't well received at first either. It wasn't critically acclaimed and, you know, it, it didn't sell all that well. It, it, it was a monster in Australia. It went four times platinum in Australia or eight times platinum, but, you know, by, but for now, by now. Uh, but yeah, in America, it just never, and now it's like considered a cult, but a masterpiece, like one of those cult classics that are just, you know, you know, Rolling Stone, I think it's one of the top 500 albums of all time and that kind of thing. So, and of course the, you know, the, the legacy edition, which is the expanded has tracks from like demos and all this stuff. Everybody's like eating this stuff up, um, stuff from the second album that they started to record, I think was included on that as well. And yeah, so it was short lived, but it's it's sad. It's it's a shame because I think he would have went far. He might have probably burnt himself out at some point. I would I would imagine. Uh, but yeah, but I don't know wh- where he got the money to get this album produced because I you know it's 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 astounding to me the 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 at the, the absolute lushness of this record. It's like it's it's something mm. that you would record if you were well known and 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 had been doing this for a while. It's like you know. So yeah, it's, but I, I, you know, I kind of, I've been listening to it, you know, and I'm just, it's, it's haunting. I think even Brad Pitt even said, he was like, he was really into him at the time. Like he was just, he gets on, he gets in you, like his lyrics and his music just sort of like absorb you. And it's like, and he, had, he actually had to stop himself. Like he think he paused mid sentence when he was describing it. And he was like, cause he got emotional about it. I'm like, wow. Yeah. You know, so this, I mean, you know, at the time I was just like, yeah, this is next gen kind of stuff. You know, because, you know, I'm, I'm hearing the Zeppelin stuff in there. It's like, yeah, this guy's ripping off Zeppelin. Of course, I, you know, that's a stupid thing to say at the time. But it's like, but now you get it. Now it's just like, yeah, yeah. influence is influence. So yeah, it, it was it was one of those what what yeah. could have been, you know, it was the yeah. one album that people are going to uh, be able to hang on to from him. Mm-hmm. Uh, tragic. Yeah. They, you know, when he drowned, they 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 found no sign, no signs of drugs or alcohol in his system, though. So it was yeah. odd. You know, the, the circumstances are kind of kind of mysterious with what happened to him it was like well yeah was you know was it meant was it was maybe it was psychological maybe there's something going on you know we don't we don't know it's just that uh yeah. but he left us with the with that one piece of one piece of music the album that's, that's just kind of you know that's his again, legacy an, yep another mm-hmm. another tragedy of uh, unfortunately you know yep. all too common of the 90s that we're talking about mm-hmm uh, christy I, I are were... you ready for number one or you have something you have something to add to that or i don't need to add okay I think his name has been mentioned enough that Brad Pitt deserves a bell. Sorry. No, I, he got mentioned on top of the 90s. budget. Bell. Eric. Brad Pitt bell. Eric doesn't have a bell. I don't have a Eric. bell. I'm, what if we get a cowbell? And every time you mention Brad Pitt, we ring the cowbell. No, cow that would be for Christopher <laughs> Walken. Anytime a Christopher Walken impression came up. <laughs> have the cow bell. There's no Brad Pitt bell. There will be no Brad Pitt bell. Well, there might be a Brad Pitt bell. Well, Christy could get up and kiss the, yeah, you can the buy your picture own in the background. I'll go, buy go a buy, bell. Go buy your I'll, own bell. I'll, I'll buy a bell. Don't <laughs> challenge me. I'll we'll get just a bell. edit it out each time you ring it. So <laughs> I'll ring it too much. In the end, um, I win. <laughs> so, because you made all these rules for this episode, it was the one ba- rule: just don't repeat anything from yeah, the last. Yeah, but episode. what? It, but it, if the oh, band, oh. if the band itself was not oh, in the previous episode, but the one of the artists within the band was in the previous episode. Are you allowed to pick the band? Do what you want. <laughs> Just have another beer, all right? You, you've um, broken me down with, with, I, with all this indecision. It's This was, come, this was come hard. Ready, come ready with your list I, and stand on it. I worked on this. That's it. This was like a, a, a paper, like a turn What's your paper? number one? Then what is it? If you have well, it ready, what is it? I'm, I'm going to go with... um. Man in the Box, Alice in Chains, off a of facelift. Oh, that's a good one. It's a very good one, and that's why I didn't know because I, 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 I had. Well, yeah. You know. Does that count? I have others. You weren't, weren't going to listen anyway. You've already chosen. I, so. I can pick something else. You no, you've already chosen. That's it. Okay, well, that's that's my choice. Um, that's a good one. I love that one. This song. this song brings me back to. Two two distinct places. Suncoast video, because mm-hmm. my coworker. Suncoast at the video. Time, Eric mentioned Suncoast. 
Well, it's not a secret. We all worked at Suncoast Video. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm sorry. I, Dean forgot. Now the secret's out. Um, <laughs> that deserves a couple of bells. Ding, ding. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah there's okay. no Suncoast bell either. This isn't a bell just for like anything. All oh, like the bell isn't just, oh all of a sudden the bell for this and but no, there are specific things that the bell is for. Otherwise, the bell, the has bell no tolls. Will we're be ringing determined. a bell the whole time. The bell has no it, meaning. It, wait, wait. Jeff Lynn is the only the specific. If, if thing we're he's... ringing a bell every time somebody says something, then the bell has no meaning, uh, and, and the bell is, ha- has been diminished. I think we should have you, a bell you meeting. Say, and we say, can, like, like, so can, so hang can on, Christy hang get on. a whistle or a bell when she mentions Pearl Jam, or if I mention. <laughs> All right. Well, this is how it works. Jeff Lynn. That's it. No, you did it for Lindsay Buckingham. Lindsay it seems Buckingham. to be whatever you this is, is this not that's a democracy? It. That's it. There's no other there's no other bell. That's it. There will what, be no other bell. What about a a bear horn? I don't even know what that is. A bear <laughs> horn? Yeah, if a bear is in the woods, you you ring I don't horn. get the bell to begin with. I, I never did. So I <laughs> so what, Jeff Lynn? Yeah. Okay. It's to wake people up to know that he's being mentioned. And, and, okay, and everyone well, should buried in my take shit. Take a moment and pause. <laughs> Back to Alice and Shane. I said, buried in my shit. Deny your maker. Yeah. Um. So I love this, his vocal. His vocal is so creepy in this in the song. It's, it's great. And then um, uh, the talk box was a big thing. I just the album came out in ninety. The talk box with the wah wah, um, yep. which uh. Uh, who do who they take that from? Um, Joe Walsh or Peter Frampton? That was a, the only was two Fram- that we I think it was Frampton. Box. I think it was Frampton. Yeah. They, they talked. They took it from. But it's it, it's again another one of those songs where do is it about drug addiction? Is it about censorship? Is it about veg- being a vegetarian? You, you know, kind of the comparisons of of being you know this calf like like a, is in the box and and you know, just keeping it there and buried in shit. So there's a lot of symbolism in the, in, in the song itself, but it, it takes me again, back to Suncoast. I had a coworker who would sing it. And anyone who knows this song, like Dean was just saying his vocals in this, you, I don't care if you're a male or female, you, you kind of bring your voice down when you're singing it. You, you try to imitate yep. him and his voice. Can we get an impression? Mm-hmm. No. Why not? No. Eric, everybody, else, do. Does, everybody else does impressions on this no show. No one, just you do them. You're the only one. Eric, Eric does plenty of impressions. Eric, very badly. <laughs> does, still does them. Never again. Um, <laughs> still, ste- still steps up to the mic. Hey, I even went up to you on YouTube to do it too, which was yeah. oh my god, I was sweating bullets. He I was still so steps up to the mic. Mortified doing that. Oh, but let's anyway. get you. Let's get your Wayne Staley, Christy. Come on. And and only if I oh, can we get Brad Pitt bells. No. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> um. <laughs> Uh, it, also, the Wiz for the youngins listening. No idea. You mean what the, the electronics store? Nobody beats the Wiz. Is that what nobody you mean? beats the Wiz? Okay. And you, you, you see. So, so in the nineties, and this is what we'll bring it back to Empire Records, which is why it's actually relevant to this episode. That that film in the nineties, we would go to like a Tower Video or or uh, the Wiz, and you would be there with a group of friends all night hanging out, listening to music and they'd play like this song would be played on, you know, on on there. And you're just like hanging out in record stores with all your friends, just taking in music. And so this song, when I hear it, when it comes on, I, it just, again, transports me to that. And that is a great feeling. And I hope I never, ever forget that like i i hope i always get that emotion and and mm-hmm. th- that just that little adrenaline bump when i hear songs like this and it takes me there and yeah. that's this song does that it's just a mm. it's it's a gr- the, the album's great um i i enjoy the entire album but it this is if you've never heard the song just check it out it's it's definitely they will be checking it out on the playlist if they've never heard it, and it's an intense. Well, it's a pretty intense song, and yeah, it's just one of the. I, I, Eric, did we say, did we talk about it on our on our top five seventies episode? But or was it on one of our live shows where somebody said that there is uh there is a time machine that was invented, and it's music. Yeah, music is the one thing that can take you back. One of the few things, absolutely, more so than than, I agree than, 100%. than a, than a, a book. Yeah, and then a music is. Uh, that a book and a film is music can take you back 
direct a, a direct line and connect you with certain feelings with certain songs and you can absolutely connect and remember and okay. universally more so than photos more so than books more so than movies but music they I forgot who said it but music is is literally is is a time machine yeah and that's universal that's not just that's that's across the board that's for for every every everyone it's not yeah. just like you can yeah. listen to I can listen to, to, to Bocelli and be taken back. I, I may not yeah. understand yeah, it's, it's all types what of he's music. singing. Up, yeah, so it's, yeah. Yeah, so I'm saying it's, it's universal. But that's 100%. I, I would agree yeah. with that. It is a time machine. Um, okay, my number one <clears throat> was – it was name-checked in the original episode, but it was not an honorable mention. But it was the, – the, the, this song was snuck in during the conversation – when we were talking about stuff that didn't make it, it was not snuck in by me, but it was on my list. Okay. And it, this was from 1998. It hit number one on the modern rock tracks and it's Eve six. And the song is inside out. We did talk about this song. We did. It was name checked, but it was never, it was never put, song. it was never uh, Great honorable song. mentioned and it wasn't by me. This is a, one of those songs as well. Eve six was waiting in line. Here's what we got. Listen to it. Enjoy it. And we're going to move on. Um, and the guy, the, the bass player, Max Collins, Eve six is a, is a trio. <clears throat> he was like 16 when he wrote it. By the time they got to record it, he was somewhere between 18 and 20. Mm-hmm. Um, and inside out is just one again, <clears throat> I'm a guy for the hooks and this song has got, it's got the hook. Um, it, it's got the groove to it. Uh, it's got the vocal. It, it's, it's catchy. It's just one, it, th- these, <clears throat> I think these songs right here probably epitomize maybe what I was going for, maybe more than the first set. Like when I look at this set, I'm like, this really to me epitomizes it. It was, it was those one hit wonders that were coming through, you know, and not making big statements, but, but contributing to that, to that patchwork quilt of the music that was going on, Mm -hmm. which was tentpoled. Like we said in the last episode by the chili peppers and all these other groups, you know, but these other ones in the background were filling in the gaps when 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 th- those singles or those groups were kind of in between albums. You had to have stuff that was coming in, and Eve Six was was just one of those bands that just kind of like for me. I'm going to say Eve Six and Sponge, like mm-hmm. number five and number one, kind of bookend for me the listening experience of the '90s for me. Yeah, it was about the Pearl Jam and it was about the big albums. But it was, it was about those other songs that just just like 70s AM radio when those one hit wonders were coming yeah. in and and catching your ear and, and then going off and you never heard from them again. You didn't know who they were, mm-hmm. you know, and now with the benefit of the Internet, we can look them up and we can find out a little bit about their story. We can find out a little bit about their history. Yeah. Um, and, and Eve six is uh, is just one of those. I got to got the opportunity to see them in like 2013, somewhere around there. <clears throat> the endless summer tour it was a bunch of these groups from from this era um and of course they played this song and like two others and then they were done and they moved on to the next one so um so that that's the top that's our top five wow that's this, we've got that's, we've got room for two for for two yeah. we've got room for two honorable mentions um i'm gonna wait because i'm surprised that <clears throat> that there's a group that christy hasn't mentioned yet so i'm not sure if they're going to make an honorable mention, I don't know if I should mention oh, it you, now, and then she'll yeah, say, "Oh, no I need to mention pick. it because it might ease my <clears throat> honorable mention." Yeah, but thing. then you, yeah, but then you might feel like, "Oh, I have to pick them because you mentioned it." No, no, I, I, I'd rather pick mention it different. after. I'd rather no, I, mention I, it afterwards, and then you say, "Oh, I should have mentioned them." No, no, yes, that's ridiculous. So anyway, no, we're going to go with two <laughs> two honorable mentions each. Okay, <clears throat> Eric, what do you got for your first one? Jesus for my first one, I got a, a, a really. <laughs> Um, the reason, well, I mean, we didn't mention it in, at all in the, obviously in the last nineties episode, but the, the brainchild of this and the lead singer of this band created the gorillas and that's Damon Alborn and his, his band blur. Yeah. And they put out a great, they put some great, great stuff. It's, you know, that's sort of Brit pop. Uh, the early stuff was like that sort of recalling the kinks and, you know, mm-hmm. the sixties period. But then later on, they, you know, they started getting a little bit more experimental, which of course led to, you know, uh, but I think he still play. I think he, the band still plays as Blur. I mean, I, st- I still think that, you know, they're still making stuff. And, the, but the, the song I chose was Park Life. 
And the reason I chose this particular track is near and dear to my heart because there's a, a sort of a spoken word. It's like a, a, a sort of a rap, if you will, not a rap, but it's like a guy like in a very sort of high pitched British voice speaking throughout the song. And it's an, a British actor by the name of Phil Daniels who played Jimmy in the movie version of Quadrophenia. So that to me is uh, it speaks to that period and that album, which I've loved so much. Um, and that just that takes me again, takes you back to a certain time in your life. And, you know, all those little these little threads that you when you see things like this happen, like somebody, this, oh, this guy's working with this guy and, you know, that kind of thing. And it's just a really catchy tune. And you, as soon as you hear it, you could definitely see the the, the seeds being sown of, of what he would be doing with gorillas, you know, down the road with rappers and, and other artists of, uh, of different genres and stuff. So, you know, this was a great great album from 94 the album is it's the title track from park life so that's my first honorable mention all righty yep <clears throat> christy honorable mention well i'm not going to mention the band i think you want me to mention because you're going to mention them and that takes a load off of me i'm not going to mention them but go <laughs> you are going to mention them no um, i'm not but go ahead you are i'm going to pick something that you don't even know i'm going to pick awesome i'm going to we'll pick, only uh, know after we listen to the episode uh, okay <laughs> I again just a great voice. Uh another song uh about uh alcohol addiction, although not hers. Um I'm picking concrete uh blonde Joey. Oh, there you go. What a great song. Do you yep. love that song, Dean? I do love that song. It's one of the yes, best I vocals know you ever. Love that. <laughs> uh, her vocals yeah. are Jeanette, just... no, Jeanette Napolitano. 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 <laughs> yep, is the lead singer for Concrete Bar. Um, and the song was about, um, I think he's, it was her boyfriend, though, uh, but yep. they toured together and he was out, you know, he suffered from alcoholism. Um, but her her voice is just killer. Heart wrenching like, vocal. Yeah, it's That's just. That's the only way to put it. If you've, it and, and if you think you don't know the song, you do when you hear it on the Where? playlist, you'll be like, oh, I know this song. This, what a great song. Um, yeah, Joe, Joey was circling around, but I was just kind of. Uh, yeah, you didn't pick it though, huh? Kind of, yeah, it was kind of leaving it yeah, off. Just love it so little, much. Yeah, you know, it was yeah. just one of those ones. Uh, one of your favorites, I see. Yeah, and and from 1990, <laughs> you know, so it was like like really at the no, it was, but I I didn't, you know, it was kind of you know for different reasons, you know, it's kind of yeah like, right, because you know, it was hard. It was very hard to do this. <laughs> no, that was and that was from their album Bloodletting. Um, that yeah. kind of kicked off. They were kind of a holdover from the 80s, much like REM. Because that was in 1990. That was like right in the beginning. Yeah. <clears throat> so they were kind of carrying yeah. that torch of the alternative stuff, you know, kind of wading through grunge. No, uh, this only because you said that I, I didn't realize that they were the eight, that this album came out in the 80s. But I originally, when I was making my list. Oh, this came list, out in 1990. This no, one. no, no. But when I was originally making my list, I had thrown mm -hmm. on uh, Jane Says from Jane's Addiction. Yeah. And that came out, and I looked, I was like, oh my God, that came out in 87? Like, I think it was like 87, it wasn't in the 90s, but it was very popular in the 90s. Yeah. And I was like, and I was almost relieved. I'm like, oh, there's one less I have to cut. <laughs> <laughs> I had that with uh, with Third Eye Blind. I was going to put Never Let You Go, but it came there out was, in 2000. Yeah, there was a couple of songs that were, were, so were I was like, oh, I was like, too late. You know? Right on the uh, cusp. Modest, yeah, but, yeah, but, Modest Mouth Float On was on my list. And I'm like, whoa, that didn't come out in the yep. 90s. Like, that oh, and the okay. smithereens, Girl Like yeah. You, was on the cusp and it was 89. I'm like, I, I can't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, when, <clears> when throat> songs throat> got cut because they didn't make it in the 90s that I loved, I was like, oh, easier. thank God. Right. Uh, my first <clears throat> honorable mention is another one of these guys that passed through. And this was from 91. So they, these were these were early on. But absolutely, this song like really kind of puts me back. Uh, Toad the Wet Sprocket, All I Want, oh. from 1991. What, you had it? No, I had another song. Oh. It's, I had... it's, it's, it's like th this song, the way it starts, you know, doom, da, da, doom, da, and, you know, and it just starts and you've got really nice shimmering acoustic guitars, um, a, a great chorus. It just it just puts you in, in you know, it, it's just one of those great summary songs that you can mm -hmm. kind of put on um and enjoy and 91 i didn't realize i didn't realize it was that far back when i looked it up i'm like wow this was yeah this was like an eternity ago for this type of music but it fit in with all the other stuff that was going on and, and first i thought it was 
at first I was I thought it was uh I thought it was Big Head Todd and the Monsters. I thought that's who did it. I thought it was Big Head yeah. Todd and the Monsters. And I'm looking it up and it's like totally and it's not wet coming up. I'm like, no, it's like it's one of those weird names though. It was, yeah. it was to- Toad the Wet Sprocket. Yeah, I had uh, it's something's all always wrong. I yeah. love that song. Something's always wrong. I uh, yeah, that that came out I, I, the, the, from their album Dulcinea was uh yeah. That was a that was a, that was the one I had. Well, yeah, that's uh, see, that's yeah, pretty obscure yeah. that that one. Uh, yeah, that one's there. So, what do you what do you have for your second? Uh, your second. Okay, for my mention. second, um, I'm gonna go with. I'm kind of I'm kind of like Christy now. I'm kind of like <laughs> back <See>? and forth. <laughs> um, but I gotta go with my gut, and it's you know it is a, it is it was a great a big hit. And we did mention him in the, in the, and you know, he didn't quite make the list. Anybody's okay. list, but he was name dropped. And I think Christy mentioned, uh, didn't make her list, but Dave Matthews band. And that's crashing to me. Uh, there you go. That, <clears throat> yeah. We talked about Dave Matthews. Yep. That's my, uh, Kelly and I, that's a very special song. And I, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to say why, but, uh, it's, it's a little, All personal, right. but, uh, <laughs> <clears throat> did you have a car uh, accident? Was she driving and you were no, driving? No, no, no. It's a whole thing. Or? I, you know, I'll, okay. I'll, I'll probably tell you guys at some point, but, okay. uh, I'll just they leave got, it off the they record, got drunk. Know? They got drunk. The lights were off <laughs> crashing into each other. Well, okay. the song is <laughs> decidedly about a peeping Tom, but that's not what was going on. So like, just, Hey, so now, yeah, okay. so, you know, but, oh, uh, the police say? oh my, yeah. Oh, oh my! You guys oh my. are role playing. We we appreciate good role playing. You know what? I'm I'm happy though that that some of the echoes of the first episode made it in. We totally yeah. didn't just kind of forget right about some of that stuff. So, Christy, <clears throat> your second honorable mention. What's it going to be? I I want to comment to Eric's honorable mention that sure. Dave Matthews and I'm going to echo this from the first one. Never. He he wasn't the part of this genre for me, much like I, Alanis Morissette wasn't. So I wasn't snubbing him because Under the Table Dreaming is probably one of the greatest albums to ever. What, come what out. is he to you then? Rock, folk? I mean, what what, what I'm asking? Well, he, what, yeah, what, he, what, what was he? He was, he was part very of much. Deal. My reaction to him was was he, what is, you know what is this? Is it jazz? Is it jam? Well, is it because he has you know, he ha- he's a, he's kind of a jam band without being a, a annoying. A, no offense to Jam Bam, like like because he has lyrics and he doesn't go off on on crazy tangents that are like twenty minutes long, but I guess more rock jam bandy than he mm-hmm. is alternative. I'm, I'm, that's just my interpretation yeah, because yeah. I I want it to be known. I I, I want it on the record that I'm going to give Dave Matthews Band the the Medal of Merit. Okay, what'd you say? Yeah. Cut that part out. <laughs> <laughs> No, but he's decidedly more, I think people don't, a lot of people who are really into that kind of stuff, like the deadheads and things like that, don't really cheat to, uh, take him seriously because he is slightly more on no, that's because the mainstream. He's more pop and he's more, there. yeah, but, but he, he's, he, he did some amazing ago. stuff. He, this yeah, album, he developed he's a, a touring, incredibly you know. talented. He developed this, his following through touring like the dead. I mean, what a band. I mean, who, who has a band like this? I mean, he's, it's, it's just him and an the guy that plays electric guitar is not even a, a full-time member. Tim Reynolds, he's just, he just comes on whenever he needs electric guitar in the song. He just guest stars on, on the record. But Dave is like it's acoustic guitar. You got a violin, you got a sax player and a drummer and a bass player. And that's it. That's the band. And I thought that was just, to me, it just reminded me of bands like Traffic and that kind of stuff back in the day. That's sort of hybrid. What is this? But just, yeah, but alternative. I mean, it's just, it's different. And it was exciting at the time. Crash is an amazing record. Uh, 41, Say Goodbye, Little uh, Trip and Billies. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, the whole album is just fantastic. Yep. But, yep. Yeah, no, great, great pick. Great pick. It just, just not from, doesn't fall into the genre for me, but Dave Matthews is amazing. Yep. All right. What, what does fall into the genre for you? Your second, your second honorable mention. What will it be? What will it be? <laughs> You have like sheets of paper. You're supposed to have five written down and two honorable mentions. Why are you shuffling? You have no documents? idea how hard this yeah, is. This isn't the Constitution. You have it should be one page. It's not one page. Who and who prints stuff out? <laughs> Professionals. Yeah, you know who does? I bet you the professor Nick Leshy does. Okay. 
Nick, no, Nick hand writes it or he has, he dictates it and his secretary types it out. <laughs> oh, I, 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 okay. Um, listen, no rush. It's only a podcast episode. People are just going to listen until you're ready. All right. Yeah. I mean, you know, go make a cup of tea, come back, let me know. Uh, um, fuck. <laughs> Okay, just to let you know, these were supposed to have been chosen beforehand, right? That, like, this you know, was really, just kind of really putting it out hard. there that these, okay. these should have been, you know. <laughs> Harvey Danger flagpole. Setup. Nice. There you go. I knew so it. Cool, I, it. It made the list. I was. Yeah, that was on my list. That was on my list for the last time. See, you did a good thing. You get a bell. I'm not sick, but I'm not well. <laughs> I get a bell. Um, you get a bell. Just, just a, just a. I, I, a song of the time. Yes. I, I just fun. Mm -hmm. You, there's no way this song comes on and you're not bopping and singing yeah. it. Amen. And just, just enjoying the are so dark. But the well, again, it's, it's this song. It, for such an up-tempo song. They're dark. Well, that a lot of, a lot of, that's what I'm saying. Like a lot of bands chose to do that. They just, yeah, the music was so lively. In, like in, the, in this pop song, you know, that's well, how they that, snuck it in that, there, speaking of the, the period, you know, just a lot well, of crap going bitter, on. Bittersweet Symphony, like I said, was the same thing. There was a lot of songs back then in the 90s where they were talking about some seriously dark shit, and you're singing it, and if you actually stop to think about what you're singing about, you're like, whoa, what, huh? <laughs> like, what's going yeah. But what, a, I mean, just a, I, I, I mean, I, I just remember being at Glen Island on the beach and this song playing all the time, and. It's just, it's just a yeah. fun song. It's, and again, this is kind of like Joey. If you, you, you may not think you know the song as soon as it comes on. If you were yeah. alive in the nineties, yeah, you don't know it from the title flagpole. Like because it was, yeah. and, and they even said they go, it's an awful title because people refer to it as, uh, "I'm not sick, but I'm not well." Yeah. That, that, they mm. they call it that song because the guy was like, it was the dumbest title he could have given it. Like, you know, yeah, but back being, then they were always trying to be clever. Yeah, being and, arty, you know. you know, being artsy, and yeah. and it's just like you know, they don't do that. Just give it a name that people will know, and it might have yeah. even done better. But I went with I went yeah. with that. No, so I didn't that, go that with. Lead, I, lead singer actually became a music promoter, and a, he worked for he works for a record label now. Wasn't so he like an probably, air traffic controller for a while or something? No, weird? he parlayed it into into the business, but not with. Uh, but yeah, Harvey Danger was the name of the group. Can, like Pulse it. Can I one. guess That's who? A great choice. Can I guess who are you going to go? Well, after you go, I'll well, guess. Can I go? Thought can it was I do be. my final? Yeah, you know. I mean, you can, but <clears throat> I'm I'm going to stick with my original one, even though <clears throat> Eric scared the shit out of me with his number five. I'm like, <sighs> here we go. God damn, Lex Luthor. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, here we go. Like, and he was Whoa. going, oh, this is their second <laughs> album. We're like, here we go. But I have to. I'm going to leave it. <clears throat> Blind Melon Galaxy from the same album from Soup. I almost picked but, it. But Galaxy was the, was the single that was just, when I heard that, I'm like, yeah, th there's more to this band than No Rain and the B-Girl and the twirling yeah. and the, and the you know, the, the, the trippy video of them in the, in the fields. Um, you could blame Christy. Yeah, blame why? me. Because I almost picked Galaxy. I was, oh, I yeah. was trying to go back and forth with you and the two. Yeah, and I why? Don't, I, I, and I thought of you because, because of the stuff, of the stuff that you know, uh, <laughs> who's been posting the stuff about gun control and all this stuff, you know, on, oh, on Facebook. Oh, me, I have. Well, uh, well, there you go. I was still, so I was thinking of you because this song is about that, you know, uh, toes across the floor. So uh, I was like, well, okay, well, I, I, you know, so I chose that one instead. But, um, but yeah, I well, almost went with Galaxy too. It's, it's, it's fantastic. It's about his, it's, it's about his drug addiction. It's a, it's about his yeah. struggle with heroin. <clears throat> you know, lyrics like, can I do the things I want to do that I don't do because of you? Mm -hmm. And I'll take a left and I'll second guess into a total of mess. Mm -hmm. So he was really talking about his addiction in Galaxy, but he was couching it in also in, in the car that he used to have when he was young. And yeah. uh, and it's just, you know, it's it's it, it was a harder edge than, than No Rain and some of that. And even Tones yeah. of Home, which was on their first album, which are great songs. But Galaxy really just that song just was kind of hitting hitting a lot harder and showing that that blind melon was going to have more, more to offer that they weren't just doing the second album of let's repeat the same thing again. That's right. You know, let's kind yeah. of cash in. They were, they were really going for something different and galaxy to me was like, Oh wow. I was like, Holy smoke. 
And unfortunately, uh, and I nobody... really loved I really loved that song. So and nobody noticed at the time. Yeah, when it came yeah. out. It, it, it came out and soup was like. Pfft. Yep. It flopped, and like Eric said, he died a couple months later, and then that was it for Blunt. You know, they stopped promoting. Months, he the, the died like three stopped weeks promoting later. the album. Yeah, they, they stopped st- promoting yeah. the album. That's right after he died. Yeah. yeah, again, and we talked about this in the first one, the parallels of of the '90s and the '70s. But it got mentioned so many times again in this episode of these artists, and whether it was because, like Eric said, fame came too quickly, mm-hmm. um, and maybe not be, knowing how to handle it, and also having that just th- that normal angst that people tend to have in, in these in these early years but how many of these artists that we talk about where we like dean just you know read the lyrics and this guy's writing a song about about heroin his heroin addiction and you know last episode i, I brought up mad season and and he's writing to, to heroin and no. where you know it's kind of it's kind of an odd thing to sit here talking about this music and how impactful it is and how how much we enjoy it and there's so much pain behind a lot so much of it yeah um yeah, it was a tough just, it was a tough decade for this it kind really of, was i mean uh, it's you know the 70s being the decade of excess the 90s it was heroin heroin was just taking everybody down in the 70s it was everyone's doing coke they're smoking pot they're doing all this but stuff we but lost a lot of people in the 70s in the, as well in the 90s, but in yeah. the 90s they were all dying in the 90s it's like yeah, they were it was, all just dying in the 90s it was crazy but it, it's um it was a decidedly. You know, it was a pre- that, that's a great list. That's a great list. Pretty yeah. intense. Can I guess who you thought I was going to have on? Sure. Collective Soul. No. Oh. Although they were on my list, I, I thought for on sure my, Ever, on my Everclear list. was going to be on your list. Like I will buy you a Everclear's, new house or Santa Everclear's Monica a, or Everclear's on. Uh, it just didn't make it. Uh, but Everclear I'm was surprised. Do it for you you, you I, had a I, second chance. I'm surprised you didn't uh, pick uh, Bare Naked Ladies one week. That's on my nah, list. I, I, I used to listen oh. to that song endlessly. That song's uh, great. It, like got the rap lyrics. It's, it's yeah, it's, just, you know, it's that fun. Early, that's, but that's early two thousands, I think. No, it's One not. Oh, it I 90s. wrote it down. It, it is nineteen ninety eight. Okay, and then was that, that guy didn't he a, become a heroin addict feel, too? Like later on, feel good songs. Eric, was that on our top five feel good songs? I feel I feel like we talked about it. It was. It yeah, was. That's why. Yeah, it was yeah. on our top really? five feel good songs. Yeah. So go back and listen to that episode, won't you? And Gordon, <laughs> I would have picked something off of Hello City from Gordon. I love that song. And Brian Wilson. And or, if, yeah, I had or if I had a million dollars. If I had a million dollars. That's a, yeah, that's a, that's a good song. Yeah, and I didn't bring I didn't bring up Oasis, even though I went to Snow Oasis. Yeah, again, still, I, th- I thought for sure Red Hot Chili Peppers would have made an appearance. I thought, you know. I did go to Snow Oasis. You laugh. It was like, I, was I, I felt Snow like ski. You know, Snow Oasis. And they they. Yeah, you you would concert. see the Gallagher brothers would kick the shit out of each other while you're skiing down the slope. Basically. Each other with guitars. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, <clears throat> that's going to do it. So we, we're going to put all this stuff into the original uh, playlist that we have on Spotify. So we're going to re-add this stuff. Join us on social media at, at Instagram and Facebook. Let us know what we missed or what your favorites were from the 90s. We will add that. We will crowdsource this playlist. And, and have it grow and expand even further. So um, our second, our sequel, Christy. I dare say we, we nailed it. So yes, Chris, if I'm gonna, I'm... anybody that adds songs, you'll, you'll add it to the playlist? If they're from the 90s in their alternative, yeah. Not you, okay, though. Okay, so, it, but what if? New people. Aliases of mine. With verified accounts. <laughs> Alias. <laughs> Secret life of Christy Cole. Yeah. I'm gonna Eric by the end by the end of tomorrow. I'm gonna have 62 Instagram yeah. accounts. You had you had your chance and you did it. And we've we've done a sequel, so that that's gonna do it for go pay top people. The 90s <laughs> top alternative hits of the 90s part two. Um, a lot of fun. It's interesting to revisit because we never do that. We kind of do our top five and then we kind of close the book on it and then we look at what our next top five was gonna be. So uh, it was very interesting to revisit something and kind of reconsider and have a second crack at it. You know, I don't know if we'll ever do one again. I think this might be the only one that we kind of, uh, we kind of keep it, keep it special because this is one of our, our, it is our top most downloaded episode of all time. So I think we'll leave this one as a, as a special standalone and uh, it'll be the only one that ever gets a sequel. Yeah. Fair enough. It's, Voted on. I I think it's second. Like I said, I think we nailed it. I think, I, you I know, s- we I did. second it. Good. Let's all move right. on to the Brad Pitt bill. There is no Brad Pitt Bell. 
<laughs> nope. Sorry. There might be a bread pill pit, like silent light switch that we turn off, you know, but you won't never hear it and you'll never know. So, um, thank you, Christy, for joining us on this and completing the circle from your very first episode to, uh, joining us for the sequel episode. We hope everybody enjoys this playlist. It'll be on Spotify. Eric, of course, as always, thank you. Mm-hmm. And, uh, for both of them, this has been Dean asking you or no, I, I made, it's not asking you to please be re- kind and rewind. It's we're going to catch you on the flip side. <laughs>